20 posts a day um, like for 20 years straight 20 for, no 20 posts a day for okay. 3 years straight yeah. before the first brand contacted me 20 posts a day yeah for 3 years straight yeah Damn. before before the first brand contacted me like, I went through so many trials and tribulations as soon as people saw me wear a crown and a robe you know I got racist abuse you know my son got racist abuse just me post a picture of him like people just didn't get it and I'm like how can you guys get so upset because I've put a crowd of rope on but that kind of fueled the fire that fueled it more yeah. so I was like okay let me just really push it in their face you know I'll turn up to events parties with a crowd and a rope yeah. you know walking through people like this guy's crazy like, yeah. but I loved it I yeah. loved it to be a true successful entrepreneur you have to be at the stage where you can leave your business for about three months and it's okay i always say to entrepreneurs no one's coming to save you you know no matter what you think oh my friends my friends no 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 when it comes down to it it's down to you no one's coming to save you no one's coming to help you and i know it sounds really bad to kind of install that into them but if they have that mentality like okay i have to be self-reliant i have to know when to use people when not to use people who to trust who not to trust they can have a better adaptation of how to move forward when do you actually become an entrepreneur? For me, I started calling myself an entrepreneur when I actually made a decision to be one. I hadn't made a single pound yet. I hadn't even taken any meaningful steps. I had just decided that this is the identity that I wanted for myself. And from that point onwards, I started to move towards that dream. In this episode, we have Franklin Barteng, properly known as the King of Trainers. He's been a founder for more than 20 years and he has been through the various stages of entrepreneurship, from the point of becoming a millionaire to almost losing everything to rebuilding it all again. His story is one of perseverance as well as the skills and the insights that it really takes to be a successful founder. Join me in this conversation to hear Franklin's definition of what it really means to be a successful entrepreneur. Hi Franklin, how you doing? Bro? Hey, how you doing? I'm You're doing right. well. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank good, you. good, good. Thank you for being on our podcast. No, today. thanks for inviting me, man. Yeah. Thank you for reaching out. I appreciate it. Without a doubt. Like I <laughs> was been hearing about you for a very long time. Really? What you're doing? Yeah. Like I remember when. I think it's been at least like 10 years or so mm -hmm. since I've been hearing about the work you've been doing. Wow. But even even then, you've grown massively. So yes, wow. it's a pleasure for you to be here today. No, thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So for today's episode, um, mm. the topic I wanted to focus on with you particular is the idea around being an entrepreneur. Because mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I think as I've been going through my own journey, uh, I started my business like yeah, 10, 12 years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've even had, I guess, the question to myself of whether I'm really an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And I think when I look up to people like yourself who have had multiple successful businesses, of course, you've had some hardship along the way. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to dive into that subject and mm -hmm. look out what does it take to be a successful entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, in terms of like the way that you think, the way that you act, etc., and dive into that a little bit deeper. No problem. Okay, no so problem. let's just start off with this. Yeah. In your opinion, what is an entrepreneur? Wow. Um, <laughs> you know, I think an entrepreneur, there's, there's so many different stages, right? Um, I, I considered myself an entrepreneur when I was a kid. You know, I was in the playground selling matchbox cars and, and doing like all sorts of transactions just to get extra money, right? But I feel that there's there's different levels. I feel that, you know, working for yourself and working a nine to five, you could be an entrepreneur. Sometimes we kind of um, look at, not working other places and just working on your own business, just being entrepreneurial, which it is. But, um, you know, having a, a nine to five and doing something else is entrepreneurial. Just doing something just outside the box is outside the box entrepreneurial too. Um, but then there's kind of like that whole high level of like serial entrepreneurism and stuff like that. And then I feel that to be a true successful entrepreneur, you have to be at the stage where you can leave your business for about three months. And it's okay, <laughs> do you get what I mean? You know, um, I have some businesses that you can do that and some businesses you just can't. So yeah. sometimes I, I, I toy myself whether I'm successful or not. So it's one of those ones. So obviously you mentioned you started when you was quite young, yes. um, starting off in the playground. Yes. So there's a lot of people who have that story, like mm -hmm. selling sweets, football yeah, yeah. cards or whatever. Yeah. But if you didn't start kind of at that young age, mm -hmm. can you still be an entrepreneur? hundred percent. hundred percent. It's it's like, you know, it is, some people are just born with it, but then some people can kind of learn and adapt. Do you get what I mean? I mean, I feel that 
when I was young, when I was young and I was doing that, I didn't really see it as entrepreneurism I, because I didn't know what it was. Does that make sense? Yeah. So for me, it was more kind of just, you know, I need extra money <laughs> to just buy sweets and, and, and stuff, you know. And then as you develop and you grow, for me, I, 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 I realized um, I wanted, I didn't want to work for um, anyone when I was very young from like about 15 or something like that yeah. I realised now I don't want to work with it for anyone and then um, you know I'd done a small stint at an advertising agency called BBH you know mm. um, and then I uh, I remember advertising is like I love advertising I love like kind of putting stuff in play like marketing and stuff like that and I learned very um, I, I interviewed a young man at the time I was younger <laughs> but I interviewed him and and you know, he was in the advertising field, but he was one of 10 teams. Yeah. Um, he was like a designer and he had a copywriter, you had to have a team. And then he was working for literally for free for like a whole year, yeah. just to be chosen to be made a, a, a proper employee of, of this massive advertising agency. Mm -hmm. And I was young and you know, I was I was making money myself and I was like, so how do you kind of live? And he said his wife takes care of him, which is there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But for me, that's not, I saw that and he changed my life. Yeah. That's not something I wanted to kind of do, you know, and I, 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 I you know, I, I don't want to be working for someone for free, putting my, and this guy was a, brilliant he was working on big projects etc and then for them to say like like thank you for your time and go do you get what so i mean to be clear was he working for that company for free during that time or yeah well yeah he was on like a kind of uh one year internship um mm. and then that's how they do it because the amount of um jobs available after graduation um of design at that time this was yeah. many years ago there wasn't so they had to kind of choose a team of 10 and and he was he was getting 50 pounds a week for travel Wow. You know, and that just changed my life. I was like, nah, I'm not, I hate doing that. So I just thrived and I said, I have to kind of work for myself. So is, would you say that money has always been a big motivation for you? It, it was. When yeah. I was younger, my, my whole thing was I wanted to be a millionaire before I was 30. Mm -hmm. It was all about money, 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 money. And growing up where, you know, I grew up in Tottenham, you see certain things, you just want to have more. Do you get what I mean? It's like that whole hunger for more, nice trainers, nice this, nice that. And it was always about money. Yeah. Um, and then when I kind of, you know, uh, reached my goal, so to speak, in kind of property of making, a, like having a million in property, it kind of changed when I realised it wasn't all that it seemed to be, right. you know. And then um, I just kind of took a step back and thought to myself, let me, let me just figure out what I love and, and how to kind of turn that into money. So I guess right now there'll be a lot of people who will associate entrepreneurship business with being money being the focus. Mm. Is that the right mentality? Nah, or? nah, not just, this is me personally. Okay. I mean, obviously you want to make money yeah. and money's always a great driving factor. And if I'm honest, it's so sad, but people only respect the money. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Some people, if they, like you said, you've seen my journey, some people respect the journey. But if you look on the outside looking in when someone has nice things and all that sort of stuff, oh my God, the money, the money, the money, then, you know, sometimes, and I, and I don't mean to say this in a bad way, sometimes a lot of people may not know where the money's coming from because you, there's many horror stories of this X, Y, Z. And then they just celebrate, oh my God, he's got loads of money, he's an entrepreneur, he's this, he's that, he's that. But then... I got to the stage where I respect the journey. What are you doing it for? Like, mm. do you, I mean, like, why are you putting yourself, because it's not, it's not easier than working a nine to five. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people think. It, it could be more rewarding at the end. If there is an end for, an, uh, you know, a real entrepreneur, they'll say there's never an end, but you know, what are you doing it for? And where's the journey? And that's kind of what I respect more. So in your case, obviously money was the, the beginning factor. 100%. But then why are you doing it now? Like, what are you doing it for? Um, so for me, I'll be honest, like, after I kind of went through the stint of my, I would say mildly successful, getting mm. to where I need to get to and then nearly losing it, I, I just... I just said, what do I love? What do I really kind of love doing? And for me, it's, it's fashion, footwear, meeting people and stuff. And I turned that whole thing into a business. And it's just it's just fulfilled me, you know? And then in the kind of quote unquote king of trainers world, the footwear world, I've achieved everything that can be achieved in my personal opinion. And then I just kind of strive to kind of push the boundaries more. So for me now, I'm, I'm literally doing it for the love because I love doing what, I, what, what I'm doing. Okay, so there's a lot of, I guess, like lessons that people can reflect on there, but mm -hmm. also at the same time, 
for I think to myself like five or ten years ago when mm. it's like yeah it'll be nice to say oh, I can do this for the love I can, mm. it'll be nice to say our oh, money's not important yeah but in the reality when you are starting a business it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of key it's, so, it's, it's everything to be so fair how would they, I guess someone starting the entrepreneurial journey balance that where you need money to survive yeah but, well I mean I, I don't because for me I like kind of went all in like I, I stopped everything and I just said okay and I just found a way and I wouldn't say everyone should do that because it was very hard for me. Um, I would say people can, you know, there's so many different schemes and and it's hard. I'm I'm not saying it's easy to raise money at all, but I would say try to have some sort of income coming in anyway through a part-time job um, and then kind of try to fit your dream around that, you know. Not saying that it's a, it's a, it's a, a, a backup plan because technically every time it's a backup you back up in it you you don't go forward but you have to kind of look at your circumstance everyone has a different circumstance some people can be like oh I can live with my parents some people can't do you get what I mean Mm -hmm. so everyone has different circumstances but don't rely get to the point where money's not coming in and then you you know it's, 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 it's to your detriment do you get what I mean so I would say please like try to kind of figure out okay what makes me money and how I can fulfill my dreams you know, yeah. around it. So moving away, I guess, from the topic of money. Mm-hmm. So we understand that having a clear vision is important. Mm-hmm. Making money to actually survive is important and be practical around that. Indeed. What are some of the other things that you need to be a successful entrepreneur? You need to have a, a, a Kanye West self-belief. Mm-hmm. I, I know it sounds crazy, right? Um, he may not be people's favorite person, but that guy's self-belief is is insane. And I've um, I've followed his journey for, for like since the beginning. And for me... I mean, I kind of have the same self-belief in the sense that you might see, you might Google me and you might see me walking around town with a crown and a robe on. Do you get what I mean? That's, yeah. That was kind of my, my branding and how I, I got people to kind of stand out and then look at me. Um, so I think you do need to believe, you know, deeply in, in, in what you want to achieve, like yeah. in a way that it doesn't matter what people say, it's unbreakable. Um, you can't kind of, people can't fathom where you're going. Yeah. And that's how you have to kind of think. So I 100% hear that. Mm-hmm. And there have been times in my, I guess my life where I've had to almost act like delusional. Like mm-hmm. everything is telling me this is not going to work, <laughs> but <laughs> I have to keep pushing forward. Yeah, yeah. But that's 100%. not easy. It's not um, easy. Not only that, there have been times when I've had to look at myself and say, Am I just lying to myself right now? Mm, so, mm. what do you do when you have, I guess, that feeling that where? And I've had that. I have that feeling mm. a lot sometimes, you know. Um, but you have to be, we have to be practical and smart. Do you get yeah. what I mean? You know, like with every business, there's ups and downs. Yeah. I've been in business. This is my twentieth year, self-employed. Yeah. Um, you know, and you got to kind of be like, okay, what is working? What's not working? Kind of figure it out quite quickly, yeah. so that you know, okay, where do I want to go? And what makes me feel happy? I think sometimes people jump into entrepreneurism because they see how other people do it. Yeah. But it might not be for them. What actually makes them happy? Mm. Do you get what I mean? And, and, and that's what you have to kind of look at. And if you're not happy doing what you're doing, you're never going to be happy even if you make money. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be like, okay, I love this and I'm making money from it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's kind of where you have to kind of look at. So... With that said then, mm-hmm. when do you know when to stop? Because you've had multiple companies, you started yeah. some, you stopped some. Yeah. But then when do you get to the point where you realise this isn't working or there's a better opportunity? Yeah, when, when, when it isn't actually working. Mm. And, that's, and that's what we just have to be practical. If it's not working, then it's just not working. If the money's not coming in, if it's not achieving its goals, it's not working. And sometimes, yeah, you can flog a dead horse and then it, it might revive. And, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you have to kind of be at a position where you'd be like, okay, how can I pivot? Do you know what I mean? How can I reinvent? How can I, you know, get to this place where I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm getting to a, a, a different space. So, yeah. you know, yeah. So one thing that you speak about a lot is being willing and able to reinvent yourself. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a time when you've done that for yourself? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, I wouldn't even call it reinvention. It's more of adaption mm-hmm. you know because um you know with my whole king of trainers name everyone's heard the story about myself and jd sports um you know love to jd sports now i love you guys but there was a time when they tried to take me to court over the king of trainers name um you know and 
I was literally just on Twitter and I've had the name since a kid. Like it's a nickname from from school. My mum loved Boris Becker, she loved tennis, she'll buy me trainers. My friends used to call me King of Trainers, right? Mm. And then it developed into, I tried to do a blog in 99. Then, um, you know, I'd done different parties and it was just like kind of a local nickname. Then it yeah. went to social media. I registered, I had a forum called Fabs Network, uh, which I built. It was a, a social media um, um, website. On there, it was, uh, I had a King of Trainers section and I just registered Twitter to promote that section. Yeah. Then um, um, my old friend said, um, like, I'm oh, just doing Adassan Post for nothing. Why doesn't JD Sports be the King of Trainers? For me, I was just, talking about trainers I wasn't it wasn't like serious but then they uh, you know came at me and said look they're gonna take me to court cease and desist and all of that and then for me I had to make the decision like okay do I now turn my per my personal brand into like a, a major brand do you get what I mean yeah and um that was kind of a way it was like, okay I reinvent myself so when I when I went through that that back and forth with them and then they decided to kind of back down and, and kind of leave the situation, I registered the Instagram and I thought, okay, how can I get my word out on Instagram? And then I started to turn it into a news page and then, you know, posting up sneaker news, footwear news, et cetera, et cetera, and kind of just thrashing the competition. <laughs> I mean, like working hard and everyone. I was doing 20 posts a day. Um, like for 20 years straight 20 for, no 20 posts a day for okay. three years straight yeah. before the first brand contacted me 20 posts a day yeah for three years straight yeah Damn. before before the first brand contacted me you know so in terms of that whole multiple posting thing I was one of the first people to do that yeah. and obviously people have now done it and come you know they've they've been successful at it and um, from there I, it was a time when I was looking at the whole game and everyone doing the news thing and then I thought to myself no let me make it more of a personality around myself mm -hmm. you know i never used to show my face and i never used to just, you know and then people didn't understand oh who's this person and i think i went to an, an event and then um i was wearing a crown and people were like take off that crown like like you're not like and it's me that this you don't understand it's actually a, a proper brand like it's a person in it mm -hmm. you know and then i started to say okay let me put my face in front of the camera and then let me go that way and then by me doing that i've had more opportunities than i can ever imagine yeah so there are two things that you said that I want to dive into a little deeper. Mm -hmm. So firstly, there's 20 posts a day. Like, yeah. That takes a hell of a lot of, I guess, perseverance and consistency. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And the other thing that we'll love to touch on relating to that as well is this idea of being your face of your brand. Mm -hmm. So like, because a lot of people don't want to be on, they don't want to put their face out there. Yeah, yeah. So let's start with the post. Yeah, so... <clears throat> So the post was a way to to kind of work hard in the competition because a lot of people were doing new, news pages, but I was like, okay, how can I make mine more potent, you know? And I was giving it in a, in a more of a kind of down to earth way, not technical. I was talking saying my own opinion, and people may like it, people may not like it. Do you get what I mean? Um, I, what I would do, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning because the way sneaker news worked is the US will always get the kind of major news, mm -hmm. and I'll go, I'll scour all the blogs on the the, the US side. And then I would use that information and then regurgitate it um, on my page with kind of my own kind of funniness or concepts and, mm -hmm. and jokes. And then it just, got, it just got crazy, like, you know, and then I just, it, from there, it just went and went and went. So mm -hmm. how did you find, or oh, rather, what was it inside you that allowed you mm -hmm. to wake up 5 a.m. every day, post yeah. 20 times a day, all of that? Like, what I wanted to be the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was it. I wanted to be the biggest. Do you know what I mean? I wanted people to know my name. Yeah. I think it was very, I was very kind of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, direct and intentional with my actions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, that's it. So I was very intentional in being the best. And that's, that's kind of where I was. I didn't want to, you know, when you have the title king of trainers, you have to be the king. Mm. There's no left or right. You have to be the king. You have to let people know, oh, you're the king and I think some people kind of got misconstrued with the name King of Trains yeah it was a nickname I've got a lot of trains etc etc but it was more so helping people recognize the scene as a whole do you get what I mean and I think that's kind of because I, I went through so many trials and tribulations as soon as people saw me wear a crown and a robe you know I got racist abuse you know, my son got racist abuse, just me post a picture of him, like, people just didn't get it. And I'm like, how can you guys get so upset because I've put a crowd of rope on? But that kind of fueled the fire, that fueled it more. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let me just really push it in their face. You know, I'll turn up 
to events, parties with a crown and a robe, yeah. you know, walking through people like, this guy's crazy. Like, yeah. But I loved it. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. And that, that leads beautifully into the second part of the question mm. I ask around now that you became the face of your brand, you yeah. used to not show yourself and now yeah. you do. Yeah. But then at the same time, being as, I guess, confident or direct about mm-hmm. what you want to accomplish, yeah. it p- opens you up to personal attacks. Oh, indeed. So indeed. And I know that's why a lot of people try to avoid being the face of their brand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see, the thing is, right, I, I'm, I've been in business a long time and there are certain businesses you can do and no one has to see you, right? But then when you look at creating a personality, it's hard to do that without being seen, unless you're Banksy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, uh, I've actually seen Banksy before, by the way. Yeah. I ain't going to go into that. <laughs> but, um, but it's one of those ones where you have to kind of be like, okay, how do I separate myself from, 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 from other people? And you do have to have that thick skin because people are going to attack you no matter what people are going to attack you. They, they, you know, it's sad because I think we live in this society where... The minute you're the face, the minute you do something wrong, they just want to rip you down. Mm. They, they forget what you've done. They just want to find a way. Oh, he's the face. Let's point our finger at him and let's tell him how we feel. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And that's how it goes sometimes. And you just have to kind of swallow that if you're willing to take that risk. So what advice would you give to somebody who right now is thinking about, I don't want to put my face out there. Mm-hmm. I, want to, I want to be able to just hide behind my brand. But mm-hmm. they also know doing so, putting their face there might take them further. Yeah, and I, and I think they have to toy with that situation. You see, like, even with my personal brand, I've got King of Trainers, the personality, but then I've got Franklin Button. And what I've done, I've built up Franklin Button in a way that I've got my, like, I always advise people, this might be going off topic a bit, is register your, your personal name as a domain name, mm-hmm. right? Because the internet space is, is getting smaller, et cetera, et cetera, right? But what I've done is I've developed in a way where, yeah, I have my personality, but my personal personal brand Franklin Whiten can speak for itself yeah. do you get what I mean and professionally you can't talk to me <laughs> that's the thing professionally I've done talks in places that people be like what <laughs> where, you know and that's where I've kind of been able to balance okay professionally I've got that and then you know on my gimmicky side I've got King of Trainers and think people could kind of you know, it depends how you kind of want to position yourself, thought leader, you know, personality, gimmick, whatever, yeah. and how you kind of can balance that. Do you get what I mean? Because, yeah, people can say, oh, King of Trains, he wears a crown and stuff, but look at my resume. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look at my resume, and then they'll be, oh. Because people have done that. People yeah. have been like, oh, like, let me Google, let me see if this guy's really, you know, yeah. And then they, yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, he really, he's really about that. So you've spoken about your son being attacked, mm-hmm. um, at least online, because yeah. of, I guess, ultimately your confidence that you've displayed. Yeah, yeah. How do you deal with that? It's hard. It's hard. I mean, the actual uh, incident is we, uh, as a pair of trainers, that was really expensive. And myself and my friend, Chris, we, we took a, a, a shoot of him and he was only two at the time. And this this picture was so beautiful. It was him wearing some trainers um, and holding the trainers. And like, they were like two or three thousand pounds. Each mm-hmm. had two pairs. We had two pairs. And we posted it and it was the most viral post of that year. Wow. Like all the blog yeah. posts, every single blog posted it. And then people come onto his page and, he, and I had a page for him called Prince of Trainers. This is before Didi Kelly done his son's thing. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to call him Prince of Trainers. I'm gonna, I've got pictures of him wearing all my trainers and I was going to make a kind of personality out of him. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, people unfortunately came onto his page and said, why is that effing N-word got these trainers, yeah. you know? And it was horrible. It was horrible to the point, yeah, you know, his mom had a guy at me and said, like, it's, and I had to kind of just leave that alone. Yeah. But you see, the thing about the internet, and this is what a lot of people have to realise, is the people technically are keyboard warriors. I have been I have been insulted. I've been called the N-word online. I've had my fam, I've had death threats, I've had everything you can imagine. But no one has ever said it to my face. Yeah. You know, and that's what people have to kind of really kind of say, okay, the people that you're engaging with in this manner, are they brave enough to say it to your face? And I've been to the same events, you know, with my crown and my robe, and people still haven't said it. Do you get yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like that, you know, well, maybe it's where I'm from. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just like that. But, you know, I know sometimes other people can't handle those types of abuse, and I don't really recommend anyone um, kind of go through or, or just have the kind of thick skin I have because it's, it's not realistic, yeah. you know. Um, I even done a TED Talk about teaching people about 
online abuse and stuff like from a young age you yeah. know it's a business again another business that I tried and it didn't go too well but um, it's just one of those situations you've got to kind of weigh up what works for you for yeah. you yeah so it makes sense obviously figure out what is what's the angle you want to do? Do you mm-hmm. want to be a public face? You done, et cetera. Yeah. But like you say, not everybody can deal with that that type of abuse. And mm-hmm. there's no need, can they not deal with it? They, mm-hmm. I also don't think you should necessarily have to. No, no, 100%. But then mm-hmm. what do you do? So mm-hmm. let's say you are a founder right now or you want to go on to start create a social brand or whatever it is you're doing, mm-hmm. but you don't want to deal with that abuse, but mm-hmm. you also still want to put yourself out there. You see, and that's the thing. Unfortunately, um, depending on... It doesn't even depend on what business. All successful people are going to get abused. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's something... It's unfortunate that, that people feel the need to point their frustrations at someone else. Yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm online and I crack joke and all that sort of stuff, but I, you would never catch me just going on someone's page just to abuse them. Yeah. Ever. Mm-hmm. You would not catch me do that because... I don't see what is the point. Mm. If someone's doing whatever they're doing, just, okay, cool, yeah, and just keep it moving. Yeah. If you don't like it, don't comment. If you don't like it, unfollow. Yeah. But some people are so kind of disturbed by their own reality that they have to mess up someone else's. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? And unfortunately, all successful people are going to get some sort of abuse attacked yeah. because the minute you do something wrong, oh, you done this wrong and blah, 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 you're a bad person or you said this wrong and... and it, it's just unfortunate. This is the way the land we live in. And I feel when you're in the, the business space, mm-hmm. you have to understand that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Okay. They're going to see every word, you know, and then when you become more popular, oh my God, they're going to go through your Twitter. They're going to, do you get what I mean? You just have to kind of, you know, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to teach social media from a young age, to, to, for, for people of a young age, because everything you do, does come back. It's a, 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 a boomerang. They'll mm-hmm. find a way to, oh, you said this about, this person and and then you know so you just have to be very careful especially from a young age okay so we already know that you're going to deal with money as an entrepreneur like Mm -hmm. you're going to deal with haters Mm -hmm. etc indeed on top of that you're going to have the difficulty of running a business Mm -hmm. all of that is going to be weighing on just your mental health 100 percent what do you do or what would you advise people do to i guess balance that out and look after themselves when they go through this process (laughs) well My first thing is to advise people, just from my personal experience, do not weigh, do not let things weigh in your head. Because at the end of the day, as long as you've got your health and your family's okay, nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to remember all the time in business. You can go through so many things. I've been through near enough hell in business, Mm -hmm. but it's not that deep. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. It's not actually that deep. It may seem deep at the time. Oh my God, these people, whatever, whatever. But as long as you've got your health, you can always have a chance to kind of move forward. And also try, as a, as a, as a entrepreneur and as a business owner or person, you have to be passive. Mm. You've got to be, you got to be more of a fixer than a warrior. Does that make right. sense? So if the problem arises, okay, how do we fix this? How do we discuss? How do we make things happen? Um, you know, the minute you let it worry, it's, it will it will go on your mental health. It will dwell on your, your mental health um, in a way that unfortunately could hinder you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But hearing that, that sounds like great advice, but mm-hmm. it also sounds like it's easier said than done. Oh, it's way easier said than yeah. done. You know, I'm, I, look, like, I feel that I'm a kind of amongst an anomaly of people, right, who can continue no matter what, and it's hard. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? It is dead hard. And I feel that people need to kind of really be at a place what can I handle mm. do you get what I mean because I handle this stuff I've been through um, stuff you know I'm doing businesses setting up businesses and my, my father passed away as I'm doing businesses as I'm releasing my trainer mm. you know a couple you know before my research my, my dad passed so I'm saying you know so it's like you have to be at a point where what can you do don't look on anyone else and be like oh he went through this or she went through that look at what I can handle and it's okay to take a step back and be like, I can't handle this right now. Yeah. You know, sometimes, especially um, uh, entrepreneurs, we feel that taking a step back or, or or kind of slowing down is a form of failure. It's yeah. not, it's feedback. It's, it's, the, it's this world, your body, that universe telling you, okay, I need to just chill out for a bit just yeah. because of, for my own mental, yeah. um, you know, sake. 
No, I can't agree with that enough. Mm. Um, for myself, that's something that I've been public about, so I don't mind sharing it here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've definitely had to take a step back as well. Mm. So around, I think it was 20, 2016, the end of 2016, mm-hmm. like the same what was going on, personal life stuff, mm. business was this, all of that. Mm. And, like it just completely, but I guess trying to push through it all for so long, mm. just broke me down. Sorry. Like, by the end of that year, like had mad anxiety, mm. like was dealing with depression, all mm. of that. And a part of me just wanted to, almost for the sake of keeping up appearances, mm. just keep on pushing, like, yeah. keep doing events, keep doing that, et cetera. Yeah. But then I reached a point where I'm like, ultimately my health is something that I can't get back. 100%. So I took 2017 off, mm-hmm. took most of 2018 off as well. Mm-hmm. But within that time, it gave me a chance to almost reset, to figure out what I want to do for myself, good my stuff. life, my business, and good since stuff. then being able to take it much further forward. Yeah, good stuff. So, well yeah, done, well you. done. I Thank think you. sometimes, you know, as fellow entrepreneurs, we have to tell people when they do that, it's okay, well done, mm-hmm. because it's not easy. It's so not easy, right? It's, it's a hard, hard thing to do, to mm-hmm. just take a step back and kind of leave it. And then, you know, but well done, man. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I guess my question to you of that is, have you ever had to slow down or take a step oh, back? Oh, of course, or? of course. You know, I mean, you know, like when I was younger, I had a, a mildly successful installation company. I was installing motor gyms, right? And then that was part of my thing. Okay, I want to be a millionaire, blah, blah, blah. Then I'm investing in property. And then, you know, we get into the point. And then literally I'm like, oh man, I'm like a couple of properties in. The credit crunch is, 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 is 2008 on the horizon. Yeah. I lose the contract that I had was installing the motor gyms. Then so you're saying multi gyms, multi gyms, yeah, multi gyms like like um, life fitness treadmills, right. um, water rowers, concept twos, In, all the multi people's houses, yeah, or houses, okay. yeah, yeah. I've done I've done some really good um, places like the American Ambassador's house. I've done right. at his place. I've done okay. one for Natalie Portman. I've done one for um, the ex Pakistani Prime Minister. I've right. done I've done it. Yeah, done okay. a few a few bits and pieces. So, yeah, saying, yeah. yeah, no, but I mean, you know, so I went through a time where my, like my tenants weren't paying their rent. You know, and I was trying to pay the rent, you know, I had to rent out one of my places. So to, so to be clear, so yeah. you're, you're doing the installation business, yeah, yeah. you're owning property, yes. and they're saying that the tenants at the properties that you're owning. Yeah, they weren't rent. paying their rent, yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. And I was paying like probably like three mortgages at one time. Okay. And then like by losing the contract, I was earning a certain kind of money and I was thinking I was doing, I thought I was doing okay. Then, you know, it got to a stage where I was like, oh man, how do I kind of get back to kind of earn this type of money where I was? So I was doing like three jobs, three contracts, all at one go. Right. And I was burning myself out. Yeah, I was really burning myself out. I was working like, I remember I was working like at Tilbury Docks from like six in the morning till 12 in the afternoon. Then I had a courier contract where I was doing 12 to around about seven, eight o'clock. I'll sleep in my car for two hours. Then I'll do a nighttime alcohol delivery from like 10 to 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Then go straight to be docks and I was doing that. And I just I just burnt myself out. It was too much. It yeah. was way too much for me. How did you recover from that? I took time out. Exactly what you did. I took yeah. time out, you know. Um, I remember writing to all my creditors, all the people I owed money, um, the mortgage companies. And I said, look, this is what's happening. I'm not running away from responsibilities. I'm going to make sure you get your money, everything. And then um, I just I just took time out. I started to kind of, you know, because I'm a graphic designer as well, work part-time doing my graphics, trying to sort out all those different things, and then uh, it, it worked out. So hearing you speak, you have started so, like, more business than I've been able to count. Like, <laughs> do, you know, do you know how many you've actually started so oh, far? Oh, I don't know, man. Um, but, I mean, I've had quite a few graphic. I had a, um, a help service for, for these creatives to help them find work experience installation company um, then like a, a, a graphic design company called Fab Graphics an installation company called Fab Van plus a man a man and van removal called Fab Van um, social media teaching and consultancy uh, property um, investment um I had um I had a stu- I've had a few studios as well. Yeah. Like um I had a studio where I sold trainers and we done photography there in Wood Green. Then I had another one in Tottenham. Still got that one. Yeah. Um, then we set up like we set up a retro store which we have in um Box Park. 
Then um, we had a, we invested in a company called Green Machine, which is now Healthfulness. Um, and then I'm a partner with um, on Averix Shop as well. You nice. know, yeah, box box. So if I was counting correctly, that sounds like about. 15 brands that you created <laughs> it's, it's, it's like probably that. more but I'm probably being a bit like you know and yeah. I've had businesses in Ghana as well nice. I've had a few businesses in Ghana so yeah. with all of those companies mm-hmm. and all the time that you're putting in I know not all of them still exist yeah how do you manage to balance other parts of your life? So you've mentioned stuff like your family, etc. Yeah. Like how how does that work? It's, 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 it takes its toll. It takes its toll, you know, um, because I'm always switched on and I feel that like, you know, whoever my, like my partner, like she understands that like, that's how it is. Do you get what I mean? Like mm. he's always switched on. Do you get what I mean? And I think that's kind of where 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 it is you know um but it's um yeah i, I don't know i just i don't even like everyone knows how i am yeah. you know what i mean it's not it, it, it's like it's not a new thing they know i've always been driven i've always been you know i'm, I'm i and i give everyone time you know i give everyone time even and that's what a lot of people kind of they kind of find not weird about me to be like but frank you're super busy yeah. but you reply back to dms you reply back to emails it you know you you, you apologize you, you're very yeah. intent with and you know i'll say you know just interaction with you on this you def that's definitely true yeah definitely thank you thank you i guess do you have to be switched on is that a requirement for entrepreneurship or is that just you well approach? i mean it depends like it, you you, you don't have to be switched on all the time, yeah. but you definitely have to be switched on to be successful because you have to know its opportunities. You have to know exactly how much you're putting in. Do you get what I mean? It's, there's no point being a lazy entrepreneur. I, it's just not going to happen. It's not, it's, it's not going to happen. Some people can be a lazy entrepreneur because they've got a, a kind of safety net. Do you yeah. get what I mean? Oh, my parents, or I've got this, I've got that. It's not for me. You can't be a lazy entrepreneur, so you have to be ready, especially, okay, like, you know, I have to get my phone. I have to make sure yeah. what what's happening is. is and it, you know. I can't agree with that enough. Mm. In the sense of, I remember I've been on business investment programs before, mm. so been with other entrepreneurs. And yeah, I would just sometimes we're just talking, and you realise that we're not playing the same game. Mm. So I was out here putting my my life savings, getting some help from family, etc., yeah. to make things work, mm. and they legitimately had an actual trust fund in their name. Yeah, so it's like if they don't win. It's yeah, cool. it's it's okay. They're fine. This is it. But yeah, so, and I think having that understanding that not everyone you're seeing around you is coming from the same place. No. So no. I know when I look into say Mark Zuckerberg or Jeff Bezos mm. and most of those big tech entrepreneurs, yeah. part of the story that gets missed out is oh yeah, yeah their parents gave them fifty k. Yeah, 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 hundred percent, something like that. Hundred percent. We can't compare ourselves. An entrepreneur's journey is individual. Yeah. You cannot compare yourself to anyone. You don't know what circumstance, and sometimes it's a pot of luck at the right time yeah. the right you know universe came and everything kind of works out but you just can't compare yourself a lot of people like cause that's the problem with social media yeah. is we look at other things yo man he's doing it so I can do it but you don't know what that person's got behind them yeah. do you know what I mean like you know yeah you no know. social media can be such a highlight reel <laughs> I guess yeah. on that point then what's one of the biggest challenges that you've had to face in entrepreneurship um, I think the hate if a, I mean, I said it earlier, but yeah. I think the hate, because like everyone who knows me and you, you have to really know me, like my intentions are always pure. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I don't have no no bad vibes. I really want everyone to win. A lot, a lot of people say that, mm. but I've been actively, like one of my friends the other day, um, and he said, Frank, you're the kingmaker because even though you've got such a big platform, you have no problem sharing someone else who can become bigger than you. And that's what I've done. I've mm-hmm. I've helped brands just become huge. You know, I'm not going to mention what brands, but, and it's like, and this is that time where you don't have to do it. Like, yo, man, yeah, look, follow this person and follow that person. I've helped some really, really big people. Do you get what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes people are like, wow, like, you know, so that's that's kind of you know. So when I'm getting people say this and say that, I I just realise that these people don't really know me. That's mm-hmm. why I don't take it offensive. And what are your thoughts on the entrepreneurs or the personalities that take a completely different approach? They're cut mm-hmm. folk, They're willing to step on people. All of that. Boy, like, that's that's them. That's mm-hmm. them. That's and some people it works for them. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You know, I've never really been like that because I'm 
I'm a real believer of karma and stuff like that. Because if you look at these old entrepreneurs who are cutthroat, it's not how you live, it's how you die, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's how you die. <laughs> I know it sounds really cold, but you can even see the the, 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 the tail of the tape of some of these entrepreneurs who have been cutthroat. Look at what's happening to them now in the media. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, everything gets revealed. Do mm. you know what I'm saying? There's no stone that doesn't go unturned. And, and if you, you, you've lived a life where it's been treacherous and, and you've done bad things, it always comes out and you just look crazy. Yeah, without a doubt. Mm. I'm a big believer that what's done in the dark does come out. Oh, it comes life. out. Yeah, it yeah. comes out 100%. 100%. If you was to talk to an entrepreneur right now that is at the start of their journey, mm-hmm. they are trying to figure out what to do next, etc. what mm-hmm. advice would you give them? Well, I feel that if they're just at the start of their journey, I would tell them to take some time to look at themselves and see if that they really are cut out to be an entrepreneur. Because an entrepreneur is easy. Oh, I'm doing this, I'm an entrepreneur. But to be consistent, it's hard. Do you get what I mean? And to have a business where you'll become a, move from entrepreneur to a business owner is also a transition that people just don't can't get their heads around. Yeah. So you have to really be like, am I really cut out for this? It is not easier than a nine to five. Whoever, yeah. whatever myths, everyone says, oh my God, they're entrepreneurs. It's not easier than a nine to five. It's the hardest thing in the world. So you have to, be of that mindset sometimes I, i'll be honest i do sit down and think should i have taken a job mm. should i have, you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean I, i'd sit down and think should i have you know do you know what i mean and then i just think you know this is just my path this is what was meant to be for me yeah. and it's not for everyone but i'll say to them are you ready for this right. yeah because it's, it's probably the hardest thing you're ever going to do so it's one thing to ask the question, but it's a totally different thing to actually know the mm-hmm. answer. Mm-hmm. How would somebody know if they are actually cut out for this life? Well, it's consistent. Time will tell. It's consistency. If you're if you're consistent enough, and um, I mean, you know, some sometimes it could be quick. It could be like, oh, right, I've done it two years. It's worked. I've done it three years. But it has to. You have to be consistent through the failure. You have to be consistent through the fire. And when you're consistent through the failure and the fire, that's when you know. I'm really built for this. You yeah. know, things can go well, oh, and, but then when you're hit with something and you crumble and everything falls down and you can't get back up, that's when you're like, I wasn't really ready for this. I just had a good break, you know. Um, but you have to be consistent in a way that, okay, this is the, like the world's coming on top of me. I'm losing everything. How can I navigate? And do I still want to continue after this? I think sometimes things get kind of misconstrued. Entrepreneurs are business owners, you're right? But to be a successful business owner, you have to be able to leave your business. Mm. That is a successful entrepreneur, to be able, I said this earlier, to be able to just leave your business, yeah. you know? Because you've hired people that can do your business for you and are making your business successful without you. You have to be able to know that you can't stay at the helm. And that's even been sometimes at my fault. I can't stay at the helm all the time. Yeah. I have to be like, okay, I've employed people. This is what's happening. Let me... Let me let me go back. So you have to kind of know that transition. So that's really a, that's a really big point in terms mm-hmm. of that transition to another level of entrepreneurship. Yeah. But a finding the right people. Indeed, and it's B, hard. Trusting people. Oh, it's stuff. hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, had to do. Yeah. I've been done over by people I consider some of my best friends. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? And um, it's it's just a shame that that just you have to realize that reality. But again, like I was saying, you have to have your own self belief. I always say to entrepreneurs. No one's coming to save you, you know, no matter what you think. Oh, my friends, my friends. No, no, no. When it comes down to it, it's down to you. No one's coming to save you. No one's coming to help you. And, and I know it sounds really bad to kind of install that into them. But if they have that mentality, like, okay, I have to be self-reliant. I have to know when to use people, when not to use people, who to trust, who not to trust. They can they'll have a better adaptation of how to move forward. In terms of knowing who to trust or I guess building that network or those relationships Mm. what advice would you give to people um time will tell time will tell because there are some things and it's not even a a fault of of anyone people change so you and another person have a vision and sit down and work things out and be like yo we're gonna do this together man like we're going through this together and that person will be like ah like a year down the line I don't really want to do this but you're still dead set on doing it do you get what I mean so you you have to know you know is your vision our vision or is it your vision do you get what I mean and once you know as an entrepreneur this is my vision and then people and then people can help as long as you know it's your vision 
if that person's not there, you can still do it. Do you yeah. get what I mean? And I'm, I'm, that's how I am. I can still do anything I want to do. So if you're sharing a vision with somebody mm -hmm. and six months, one year, two years down the road, they decide to leave, mm. what do you do? And even like on a legal level, like how do you handle that? Okay, well, I guess, I guess in the beginning, you have to start in the beginning. I, always, I said this before, I said um, <laughs> buying trainers are cool, but more important is, is, uh, is account fees. But more important is also, is also solicitor fees and getting the business set up correctly. Yeah. Um, if you can get the business set up correctly from the beginning and have like a kind of an agreement in from the begin beginning, speak to solicitors and about that, I feel that you will be in a better position if things break away. Mm -hmm. I feel that you should set up your business with that in mind. You know, yeah. anyone who's going into business, I know people say, oh yeah, this is my best friend, I love him. But best friends, or love her, sorry, or best friends, relationships always, no, sorry, sometimes fail, yeah. <laughs> sometimes fail. Mm -hmm. So you just have to have that in mind. This can be um, it's a situation that fails. What do we do if it fails? And sometimes have that honest conversation with your business partner. What happens if this fails, man? What happens yeah. if we don't reach our target? What happens if me and you fall out? Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Because anything can happen. And that's just how it has to be. You just have to really go in it with an open mind. And let's be honest, there's so many tools around you and examples of things like this happening. So you have to you have to be like, yo, can we can we can we get past this? Okay, so have those difficult conversations. Oh, hundred percent. Don't yeah. shoot caught nothing. It's yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. So then with that even so would you recommend going into business with your friends or family or? oh yeah i would i mean people say it's not great i would say yeah go for it if if they if, you know because i've got business with my sister my mom everyone um my friends you know one of my good friends we're in business of course my friends like we, like you can do that it's just you have to just have those conversations and just be realistic you know so Franklin, I definitely, definitely want to say thank you so much for taking the time out to do no, this. No, thank you, man. But not just this podcast, but in all mm. honesty, as I've said earlier, like watching mm. what you've done for all these mm. years, you've been an inspiration to a lot of us. Thank and you. And not only that, but the amount that you're willing to give back to other people, young entrepreneurs, etc. I appreciate it's, it. It's beautiful to see. Thank you. And I'd love to see more people with that type of mentality and heart. Let's, let's go. We, we, <laughs> there's enough for everyone. We're all going to win. We yeah. all can win. It's enough for everyone, man. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for today. No, um, thank you. My last question to you yes. is, as we continue to build this podcast, mm -hmm. is there anyone that you think would be a great guest for, to, for us to have on in the future? Oh, goodness. I'll say my, 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 my business partners, like my business partner, Charlie, Charlie Buckle, she's amazing. She knows everything about health and she's been, a, she's done a lot of, a lot of business. And then one of my friends, Anthony, um, he's also my business partner as well. But I mean, I, I would say, look, Aim for the skies with your guests, you know, um, Stephen Bartlett. Aim for everyone. Do you know what I mean? Everyone who who you aspire to kind of meet, aim for them and and, and, and hopefully they will they'll they'll they will reply. Great. Thank you. Cool. I'll Thank you, man. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We release a new episode every Sunday, so make sure that you subscribe and follow us so that you never miss out. If you'd like some more inspiration while you wait for the next new episode, then check out the recommendation above. Don't forget to follow us on social media and you can send us a question or a dilemma that you'd like us to answer on the podcast. This is Claude Williams, you've been watching Behind the Dreams and we look forward to seeing you at the next Dream Nation event.